Welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do uh, how I built this spray booth. It's time to clean this thing out. Uh, a subscriber recommended that he'd like to see kind of how I built that, thinking about getting into spraying some Tamco clear coat. So uh, let's turn around here and check this thing out. All right, so here's the uh, spray booth. Again, this is all half inch plyboard. And uh, as you can tell, we're looking at about 23 and a half inches wide. Rather than sit there and show you the measuring tape, I made a little very primitive to say the least, but this is the dimensions. Uh, and we'll go through each one of these. Um, the very back piece is 23 and a half by 18. The top piece is 23 and a half by 11. The very bottom piece is 23 and a half by 19. The front piece is 23 and a half by six. There's two side pieces that are nine inches along the top, 17 inches high, 19 inches along the bottom edge. Then as we turn this unit on the side, you're gonna see that there's really four pieces that make up that side piece, counting the back. From the back, we'll then have an inch and a half piece of plyboard that piece could be, I would say two and a half would be, would be even better. But I went an inch and a half. Uh, in between that and the side piece, plyboard that's got a 13 by 10 cutout. And this is where the squirrel, squirrel fit cage fan is located. Then your filter fits over the, the top of this that you're going to spray through. So your overall dimensions of half inch plyboard is 11 and a half inches along the top, 19 and a half inches along the bottom and eight inches tall. So let's just take a look at it. So again, here's that six inch piece. This is very important. Um, as you're spraying, you know, those fumes from the solvent-based paint or in my case, the, the Tamco Clear, it kind of wants to roll up. But I think I've got that problem solved or if you're building one, I'll show you one big improvement uh, when we come back around that I would make in this particular build. There's our top piece. Let's turn this around to the side. I know I kind of got you close there. I'm trying to film this with camera in one hand. And there's the, the nine inch. Actually, it starts right here, nine inches. That is tacked on to the bottom piece. And as you can see, here's that half inch piece I was talking about that forms our cutout for the squirrel fan. I would make this two and a half inches, maybe three if you wanted. An inch and a half just really wasn't enough air space in there. So we'll come up here to the top. So we got this inch and a half piece of plyboard here. Then we have our back piece formed on the back of that. It comes around and is attacked to this top piece. Okay, got a two gang switch. I had plans to to put a light on it uh, for the interior, but I just plug it into the wall. I'll show you that at the end. Uh, let me see if I can spin this again. Okay, so here's our back. And then this is the what gets it all done. This is a Dayton fan. Uh, I will leave a link in the description to this, to this fan. I'll also have some B-roll photographs of the actual sticker here on the motor. Uh, but uh, I don't remember exactly how many horsepower, how much volume or air this thing pulls. I've had this thing for over 10 years, but that's the Dayton motor. And I just took some 
some wire here uh, coming out of that capacitor into the switch. My issue was uh, this fan really should be down here lower, and I'll show you that from the inside as well. Um, but my issue was trying to get this thing bolted onto this. Uh, there really wasn't, these things are designed to bolt on up here at the top. So what I did is I just took some baling wire, uh, put some screws on it, tightened it up there, and again, put some of this heat and air duct tape, whatever it's called, uh, to kind of seal up the edges and keep everything tight. Same thing around this, because this piece is square. And obviously we got a uh, reducing fitting here coming to a four inch piece stove pipe. And so trying to get something round to fit on something square was a little difficult, but uh, this is what I did. It's very sturdy. None of this stuff moves. I mean, it's on there. Okay. But again, let's get back around here to the front. I want to show you what I would change. So we're back here at the front view and what I would change on this particular build is, as you can see, looking up into the back of this, I've got that squirrel cage fan too high. Uh, that fan should be sitting right there. My hole should be there. When you're spraying paint, you're spraying it directly into it, really even more so into the bottom of it. That's what I've been doing today is trying to clean some of that stuff off that collects on the back of it. But uh, uh, that's... That, that's definitely one thing that would make this thing better because as you're spraying that, it's pulling that uh, overspray fumes up into the squirrel cage fan. Well, if you're doing a lot of volume, it'll start to kind of roll back over, and I think it would just be a way better sitting way down here low, and I'm probably going to redo that, although I haven't done it in 10 years. So it's not a big issue. Uh, but if you're doing a lot of bait, especially with that Tamco high impact clear coat stuff is you do not want to breathe that. So, uh, most of the time, if I'm doing, you know, 15 or 20 baits, I'm going to be spraying, uh, quite a bit of volume of that stuff. I'll go ahead and wear a respirator, uh, just in case some of that stuff does roll out the front of it. But for the most part in small batches, I've never, I've never had any problem. So, and then. All I rigged up, uh, I'll put my filter in here, is I got a 14 by 20 filter. You could make this whatever size you want. And I just cut a couple pieces of uh, some, I don't know what that stuff is called, screwed it in there to where it holds that filter in place. So, But again, I'll show you one thing I didn't include in that. You can see this little piece here. So I came back and, and put this little frame in here uh, so that I did create just a little extra depth in here. But if I had to build this all over again, I would still use my same cutout right here, but have it much lower, have my fan a lot lower, have a little more depth in here just <clears throat> so it can collect more air in that volume of space there. And uh, other than that, this thing's been great. Uh, you know, a lot of them were built where they just suck it right out the bottom. Build you a base underneath there. That's another possibility as well. But you're going to have issues with that fan sitting under there. I, I just, I didn't want to mess with it. Plus, I, as you guys know, I always use exacto knife handles. And uh, I've got a lot of different holes pulled in here. That way I can have that bait sitting at about any angle I want it. And... Uh, this thing has served its purpose extremely well. Again, uh, one of these days I'm going to redo this. Just get me another back put on it and lower that blower motor down and extend my exhaust pipe, which I don't know if I've showed you that yet again. Uh, I just run it straight up. This is just an add-on closet here in my garage. I mean, I run that back up and over the top and it, goes right out the side of the house so uh it's a pretty good ways but uh, it seems to work well guys i've been using a long time and i very seldom get any kind of fumes i hope you guys have enjoyed uh this little video uh hope it helps somebody build one i'm not a carpenter by any means as you can tell it's just kind of sandwiched together there but uh there's again like i think i've said before there's probably 10 better ways to build this thing than what i did but that's how i've done it and it's worked very well for me. So 
uh, kind of give you some ideas of what to do. And uh, by all means, uh, leave a comment below on what I should do to make this thing a little bit better. Uh, while I got it tore down and cleaning it up, this would be a good time to, to do it if I can take a little time off from painting anyway. If you like the video, smash that thumbs up for me. If you haven't already, subscribe. And uh, we're getting real close. Maybe by the time this video hits, we're at that thousand mark that everybody's after. So until next week, Green Country Bakes, signing out. <laughs>